we're going to basically start by getting an idea of how to measure this shirt on top of this doll. And as you can see, it's way too big, but that's okay because we are going to change that situation. So we're gonna take a measuring tape and we're gonna get an approximate measurement from the neck, or should I say the shoulder over to the shoulder, which eh, looks like it's about four and a half inches, maybe five. The neck itself is about three inches, about nine inches for the shirt. And I'm gonna write these measurements down as well. I'm sure that there are a lot of people who watch this channel that have done some DIY projects in their time. And I used to do them all the time as a kid. I loved making Barbie clothes and things like that. And the reason I picked this little shirt here is because it is the same color as Jolene's signature shirt. And I just think it will work perfectly for this if I can just figure out how to get the size just right. I'm going to put the shirt on her to see if it fits well on the neckline as it is. It's probably going to be a little bit big, but I have a feeling it's not going to be too big. So I'm just going to button it up in the back. And this will give me an approximate measurement for the shirt. We do have some starting points here with the neckline being what it is. So I've pinned where I think I'm going to cut the neckline area and I'm going to give it a little mark in both of those places and it's approximately the same place. I always tend to give things a little extra room to breathe because you don't want to cut off too much at once because then you might not get the correct measurement but it's not really a science so much as just kind of giving it a really good guess and honestly that's how I normally would tackle a project like this. And now I'm going to get the measurement of the shirt length. So I had said it was about nine inches. So I'm going to measure down to nine inches and put a little mark there with my pen. And that's going to give me an idea where I need to cut this off to make the shirt just a slight bit shorter. I'm going to cut straight across. So now what I'm going to do as I said, I took the measurement of her waist and I'm going to use that measurement to get the width of this shirt. And I mean, that's about right. Do a little mark there and a little mark here. Always better to do just a little more than you think you need. Looks like it's about that angle and I'd say about that angle. That looks about right. So I'm going to just recreate a basically the front of the shirt. I think I came up with a simple way that I can avoid having to cut this line up here for the neckline. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a line from the shoulder down to this waist spot that I started, basically making it look like a tank top almost. All right, so I've got that tank top piece cut out. And like I said, I'm trying to avoid as much fuss as possible so that this can be done quickly. Sewing across there, making a new seam for the neckline. Now I kind of like the oversized t-shirt look. So I think I'm gonna try to leave this t-shirt basically exactly the same because I love the way it kind of flares out. That's a very modern look right now. Okay, so there's a seam right here from the original shirt. And I think what I'm going to do is instead of leaving the bulkiness of this seam, I'm just going to cut, essentially cut this sleeve right off and then see what it looks like after that. Okay, so those are the two sleeves and I am going to have to cut down on this part here. So I'm going to turn it inside out. So we'll try to make it about the same on both sides. So there's our sleeves. So again, we're going to pin about where that mark is on the shoulder. You can see where the mark is. We're going to pin right outside of that so that we can sew straight across to get the seam that we want, basically imitating this seam. And because this is jersey fabric, I'm going to use a zigzag stitch to help it stretch. And I'm just going to do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so now that I have my two shoulder seams done, I'm going to cut them so that I don't have quite so much bulk, about a quarter inch. So there we go. 
and then we'll open it up so that it's right sides up. And then we're going to take our sleeve and we're going to line it up as best we can with that original seam to the seam on the shoulder and we're going to pin that all the way down. We're going to take it to the sewing machine and sew along this seam all the way around to sew it to the bodice or the front of the t-shirt. We can fold the doll shirt in half and you're going to see the progress that we've made because you'll notice that the shirt is smaller now so all that's left to do is sew the sleeve to the bodice on both sides. Just to get that part nice and neat and even, we're going to pin it along the whole edge of the shirt, just like we did before. And I think what I'm going to do, instead of making this line up exactly, which it looks like, see how it's not lining up exactly because the shirt is just a different size on the front and back of the bodice. Um, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sew from the edge of the sleeve down to the hem here on the shirt and cut off this little bit of extra sleeve since the doll doesn't really need that big sleeve anyway. And that should be enough for both sides. Mainly though, I wanna make sure I get the length of the shirt. I don't want that to be wonky. So I'm going to start at the bottom and work my way up. And I'm gonna sew the hem facing out here so that it's all laying flat. And we're gonna work our way back up on the other side. So I'll turn it inside out. And you can see we have a new seam. This is gonna be a tight little t-shirt, but it'll be cute. And remember, we have those buttons already built in. So that's not going to be an issue to get the shirt on extremely flexible and then all we have to do is button up the back now i just saved myself a ton of time by using what was already on that shirt to my advantage i could have just cut the whole thing apart but i didn't want to go to all that trouble i actually made it easier for myself <laughs> okay so i decided that since the shirt was just a little bit too long like i said it's better to have too much length than not enough I'm going to give it a trim. I think I'm gonna take off, oh, a good inch. I love the way it turned out, um, kind of cozy looking and oversized. That's exactly how I like my t-shirts. So I think Jolene will be very happy with this t-shirt. And also we're going to do the same thing with the pants. So I'm going to get a measurement of her waist line, which is very odd shaped. Uh, let's see, that's probably about six inches. There's not a lot of stretch in this kind of thing. I mean, it will have elastic, but you want it to fit just right. You don't want her pants falling off. And then it looks like to give her a little pant area in the middle here, the crotch area would probably be about, oh, I'd say four inches. So six inches wide for the waist and four inches for the crotch. And then of course we need to measure the legs and her legs are pretty short. As you can see, we can get a good idea of how long the legs need to be. Probably would be just hitting her ankle. So we're going to measure from the top down to the bottom of her feet and we're gonna add some seam allowance. So it looks like it's about eight inches. So let's say eight and a half inches. And then I can actually pin about where the waist starts and ends because i want this to just fit exactly right i don't want it to be too loose and remember we already took the measurements for the pant seam earlier so we don't have to do this more than once so what i'm basically going to do is measure from the top of the waistband down eight and a half inches that i can actually see and then i'm going to do the same thing on the other side 
Okay, so this is what I've decided. I think I'm going to pick the seam. Okay, so I'm not really sure where my seam ripper is. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to try to pick this open with some scissors. And we'll try to get this open without that. All right, so the back seam has been removed, basically. I probably should take this one out first, but just to let you know, the... Yeah, this part right here, I'm going to have to cut the elastic somewhere. So I think it might as well just be in this back spot. So I'm going to cut this elastic with the waistband right there. Okay, so part of doing DIY projects like this is knowing how to solve problems. So I think what I'm going to do, because I don't want this waist, I want this on the side of the jeans. I don't want this to be some weird place. I want it to be on the side of the jeans, just like a real pair of jeans. So what I'm going to do is I'm also going to take this seam out and we're just going to reconstruct the entire garment. Basically, I want to keep the integrity of the pants together as much as I can. Um, I don't know if any of you grew up in the 90s, but I did. And back in the day, there were it was kind of a big deal to have stripes on the side of your jeans. So I made a little stencil out of cardboard and I'm going to use that to make my little design. We're going to take some black acrylic paint. I'm going to give it an approximate spot where it needs to meet. So I'd say about there. And then if we turn it over, do the same thing so we can actually get these pants on the doll. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new line that we're going to follow down to approximately this part where we pinned. And then we're going to follow the line of the original pattern and we're going to go down on an angle about like that. So we're going to sew that down to get that new front. So now that I've created that seam for the front of the pants, I'm just going to cut along that front seam. And that gives us our front seam for our pants. So now we just have to make sure that the back matches the front. And that's always the more fun part. But again, if we use the same principle and we sew the back together um, from the waistband down, we can match it at the bottom. I almost forgot I have to cut here so I'm going to cut and give myself some room for a seam allowance about a quarter inch so I'm going to draw that brand new line again starting with the edge of this clip and I'm just going to kind of follow the line of this original pattern okay we're going to pin this together so it doesn't fall apart we can figure out exactly where that new line is I think the best thing to do is to match approximately where the crotch is going to line up. And I will do that by setting a pin in place. So yeah, we can see where that new seam needs to be. So we'll take it to the sewing machine. So I'm matching these two center seams here as best I can. So we're going to go back to the sewing machine and we're going to sew around this area. All right, so now we're going to cut this part off because we don't need that. It's just a bunch of extra bulk at this point. And it appears that what we did worked very well. Okay, I'm really happy with the way these look. Let's see how they look on Jolene. So I think I'm just gonna create a little cuff at the bottom, which is true to these kind of jeans. All right, so we'll fold this down and match that seam. 
So it creates that little hem. All right, so I finished hand sewing the hem of the pants and you can see it has a very 90s look. It has that very wide leg and the stripe on the side. It also has the seam on the edge and the cuffed pants on the bottom which I think really adds to that 90s look. Now we're going to figure out how to cover up this little design here with the signature J for Jolene's t-shirt. So I'm going to actually uh, probably just draw out the J that I think will work and then I'm going to add it to the shirt. So to get an approximate size of the template, I'm going to look at this spool of thread and then I'm going to transfer it over to my cardboard template and I'm going to give it a little bit of extra room just to give me an idea of the minimum amount of space that I need to draw. When I was about seven years old, I always loved looking at craft books and there was a particular book that I really enjoyed from, I think it was the Kids Encyclopedia Collection. But anyway, they had a book called Make and Do. And I used to like looking in that book endlessly, um, sometimes for hours, and just look through that book from cover to cover. And ever since then, I've had the desire to create. That was a really big influence on me growing up. And that's probably why I decided to start this channel because I just love creating so much. Okay, so what I did was I, took that J and I turned it around so that I could easily cut it out. There we go. I like that. And it covers up that other thing that was on the t-shirt just fine. So I've decided to do a satin stitch and I'm going to take two strands of embroidery thread to do so. I have threaded my needle and now I'm going to make a knot. If you've watched this far, that probably means that you're the type who loves creative DIY videos. You're in luck, because that's what this channel is about. Of course, with a comic-focused twist. I'd appreciate it if you'd hit the subscribe button to help me grow this channel. And while you're at it, check out this next video. See you then!